Hey guys, welcome back. So here's an update for my off-grid solar system for the month of November. I'm here hiding behind this tree so I don't have to wear sunglasses and I can uh, hide from the sun a little bit. We are having a beautiful sunny day here in Ithaca, New York. Unfortunately, I am not getting anything from it. You can see all that snow covering my solar panels up there. Unfortunately, that's one of the downsides that I didn't realize going into this. Uh, so November has been good. The whole system has worked very well. I'll get into that in a second, but I didn't realize how many days would be lost just from the solar panels being covered with snow. The last two days, we've had storms and it's been coming down pretty good. And the solar panels had many inches on top of them. And I just thought it would melt off fairly quickly. I do have a lot of experience with solar hot water and with those systems, the snow would melt off really quickly just because there would be so much heat generated and the panels would be clear fast. With these, unfortunately, it's been all day of a beautiful sunny sky and they are still covered. And of course, it's so high up there that I don't even think I can get a rake long enough, a roof rake to, to clear all those. So I'm disappointed with that. That's where a ground mount system definitely would have won, but I didn't really realize that. I didn't, think about that. Nobody told me that was going to be an issue. Oh well, I'm going to try to buy a rake anyway, see if I can get the longest one possible. And if I can at least get the bottom row, then maybe that'll start warming up the panels and more of it would melt off. I don't know. But unfortunately, like I said, we had two days of storm and then now we have more snow coming tomorrow and we've been on grid all of this time. So most of the month of November, we've been on grid not much I can do about it. Thankfully, like I mentioned in my last video, I figured out that I can just have the grid switch on and have that power setting to negative two kilowatts. So then it's only pulling that much from the grid. But I have actually noticed an even better thing about that is that if we do have to run the dryer or something, we're still low on battery power, uh, it will actually pull more power from the grid if necessary. It will go over that two kilowatt mark. So that's nice because our dryer's electric. I converted that from propane uh, last year when it was sunny and all this stuff was working great. And yeah, so now it does get tough trying to keep electric cars charged and running the dryer and running the circulator fans for the furnace system. So I'm learning a lot and nobody told me this stuff. And even in videos, I watched a lot of videos going into this to figure out if this was even doable. Uh, it turns out it's really not possible to be fully off-grid with at least the lifestyle that we have and the two electric cars you would need a mammoth system it would probably would have to be at least double the size of what i have currently another thing that just happened that's really awesome is that i have the new solar disconnect installed i had one of my buddies who's a solar installer come back he's the one that helped install all the panels and he finally got the solar disconnect installed which is something, of course, we needed to pass code. And if you've been following all these videos, you see the issues I had way back in the beginning where there was an RF system from Midnight Solar that just didn't work with this inverter for some reason. There's some kind of frequencies that jammed it and we couldn't get the RF units at the solar panel to close. Uh, so yeah, that was a whole issue. That, was, that goes way back. That was a huge thorn in my side. Uh, spent a lot of money and time trying to figure out that and why it wasn't working and Midnight Solar came through really stepped up and they gave me a whole new setup uh, without having to return the other one. I guess this new one is more expensive but they didn't charge me anything additional for it so I have these two systems. I think I paid maybe a thousand bucks for the first system the RF system. Uh, I can have more details in the description. I just can't remember the model numbers and all that stuff off the top of my head. It's been many months since I last worked with all that and I, I don't quite remember. But back then when all that was going on, I had reached out to Midnight Solar and they gave me many hours of free troubleshooting trying to help me out, trying to figure out why it wasn't working for me. So I have to thank them for all that, for sure. I, I, that was so nice. I mean, I wish, I wish Princeton Power would stand by the product and help me out in some way instead of just throwing me to the wolves but, but anyways uh, Midnight Solar was awesome uh, as you can see the red box that's right there I guess they call that the birdhouse or something and that is now the manual cutoff switch for the solar panels uh, you can see on the unit back on the inverter over there 
that other little small red box has a push button and that was going to be the disconnect for the solar system the, or the solar panels but it just didn't work out that way. Uh, go back and watch some of the videos back from the beginning when all this was happening and you can get more information on that. But long story, thankfully it is finally installed. This is a wired version. Got it done in, I don't know, something like eight hours, something like that. But I'm so happy to finally have that done. It's finally to code. I can have an inspection here sometime. I probably will wait till spring. But yeah, thank you so much Midnight Solar for hooking me up and helping me out with that. I couldn't have done this without you guys. So I am very thankful that you could help me out. Next, I can touch on the batteries a little bit and talk about those. I'm still using the T-Rex that's uh, like right up there in the garage. Unfortunately, it's a lower capacity. But like I said in the last video, I still don't have the controller to manage the temperatures or batteries and contact or stuff like that for the T-Rex camper. So unfortunately I have 77-ish kilowatt hours just sitting there. Um, I hope it's okay. I, I have coolant in there so it shouldn't be freezing, shouldn't have any issues, but I'm pretty disappointed. I really want to get that controller in and get that working because that makes life so much easier. We're also gonna tweak the settings a little bit because right now the T-Rex trailer inside the garage stays a little too warm. I think we can drop that down. I think it warms it up to about 20 C and that's higher than it really needs to. So I'm thinking 5 C, 8 C, something like that. Because even in a Tesla, you have full power down to like 5, 10 C. So, and that's, and that's many hundreds of amps if you really floor it. And I don't need that many amps in a house system like this. I mean, most we ever see is 20, something like that. It's really low. So in the new controller that we're designing that I'll hopefully have soon in the camper, uh, we're going to have lower temperature limits and it'll just make it a lot more efficient for use here at the house. And lastly, I usually go over the bill that I received for the previous month. So in this case, that would be what? October, but I haven't received a bill yet. Uh, we did use a bit of power on grid in October, unfortunately. So I don't think it's gonna be cheap. And same thing with November. Uh, here, we're at the, right at the end, it's the last day of November, and we're gonna have a bill for both October and November. But for some reason, I didn't get a bill for October. I'm gonna have to look into that. So I can't report on that number. Um, I also might switch this to a billing cycle video because it is kind of confusing and it's hard for me to remember and report back on all the happenings for the previous month and then the previous month it might be better just to follow a billing cycle so then I could talk about that billing cycle and how we did in that billing cycle and then I would have the bill for that billing cycle if that makes any sense so instead of following a calendar month I might just make these videos billing cycle months videos <laughs> we'll see uh, I guess that's it for now Thanks for watching. I appreciate you tuning in. And if you have any questions, post in the comments below. I'd be happy to help. But I hope you guys are making a lot of power and enjoying the holiday season. See you guys.